I'm going to open up uh, and call to order tonight's meeting of the Raytown Charter Commission. I think it's officially about 6.32 or 3. So uh, we're going to do a roll call, please. Janasia? Here. Ted Bowman? Susan Dolan? Here. Janet Emerson? Here. Lisa Emerson? Here. Jason Green? Here. Steve Guthrie? Here. Sandra Harbaugh? Here. Michael McDonough? Here. Charlotte Nelson? Here. Mark Moore? Here. Mary Jane Van Busker? Here. Greg Walters? All right. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, this evening's public comment section. Anybody that's wishing to speak before the uh, Charter Commission, you would have three minutes to speak, uh, and uh, we'll allow up to 21 minutes for this section of uh, public comment. So if, if anybody would like to speak, uh, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll call you forward. Go, go ahead and come to the podium. Uh, let us know who you are and where you reside. My name is Leslie Schroeder, and I live at the corner of Lakeview and Ralston, right by Wildwood Lake, where it curves and turns into Lakeview. And uh, I'm so glad to see you guys here and taking comments. I have a few things. <laughs> I, I just, my friend uh, told me about the meeting tonight. I'm sorry, I haven't been keeping up, but I'll be here. Uh, I'd like to be sure that we're watching so that there's uh, no uh, institution of any eminent domain, okay? Uh, if you want to get the deity out after you as an entity, that's the way you do it. You want to get God upset with you? Steal somebody's house, okay? So don't do that. And we need to watch. The other is I'd like people to, to take it easy on the elderly. Some of them don't have lawnmowers at work, or they used to push and now they can't. Now, Father Angelo and Our Lady of Lords is going to start a ministry where we start mowing lawns when we find out that these people are not just getting somebody to do it for nothing, that they really need somebody. So he hasn't gotten that done yet because he's only been here for a while. We also have a simple supper on Thursdays. It's free, and we're hoping to get people to come. And uh, I would like to have uh, any help that you guys can give us in reducing the number of ordinances and repeating any that are on there because we are not a gated community. You don't want a homeowners association with people out measuring your grass, okay? This is the United States. That's, that's stars and stripes. I don't care if you want to have a teepee in my yard, all right? It's your yard. The other thing is we need to watch that we don't hyper allow anybody in the banks or anybody to hyperinflate the real estate because that will run our tax base out. If you want to find out how Detroit feels, that's the way to do it. Because every house in America cannot cost $250,000. It can't even cost ninety. Okay, There are some houses in America that are not worth more than they're worth. And we have to watch the banks and the tax assessments. And you guys are wonderful. To come up here and do this is great. And I'll shut up. Goodbye. Thank you. Is there any other public comment at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on. That's great. I apologize for being late, but I would like to make sure that it's recorded and it's out in here. We were getting ready to do that. Thank you. Okay. So.
Okay, um, as the chair of this commission, uh, one of the things that uh, has been brought to our attention is the Engage Raytown website. Um, anybody that uh, would like to can obviously get onto that website, make comments about the Charter Commission, and um, one of the things I think we need to discuss as a charter is what kind of information we also want to put on the Engage uh, Raytown website. And, um, you know, if there's questions on consistency as far as how many people, or if there's a percentage of people that might be in favor of, say, some of the things we discussed last week, like whether do we call ourselves a board of aldermen or a city council, I mean, simple questions like that, uh, proposed to uh, the citizens of Raytown through the Engage Raytown website might bring on some additional conversation that will allow us to make, or help make that decision future so um, because one of the things I want to make sure that we do tonight is last session we got held up on a lot of small issues uh, Board of Aldermen versus City Council things like that can obviously be altered and edited at any time but we don't want them really to impede the process of following through with what we're really charged to do and they did take up a substantial amount of time so at this point, I'm going to, uh, as the chair of the, uh, the uh, Raytown Charter Commission, I would like to go ahead and just propose right now that we just leave it Board of Aldermen through this uh, process and we relate to it as the board, our Board of Aldermen, and that way we can finish the process uh, and then uh, go back to it if we need to, uh, if there's a substantial opposition to that. Uh, similar with um, things like uh, whether it's the city or the city of Raytown, I think we can clarify all these issues later on in the process. We don't need to get hung up on them tonight. We have a lot of things to do, and uh, I just would like to get through uh, as much of it as possible so we can get caught back up. Um, are there any other opening comments that anybody can question would like to make? And I, I do apologize to a couple of you that tried to get a hold of me uh, the last two weeks. It's been a little bit hectic around my house. My son got married Saturday, or again, Saturday afternoon, and uh, we were just extremely busy, so I apologize if I didn't get back to you. Go ahead, Greg. Yes, um, I've been brought to my attention that the uh, meetings are not showing up on, I don't know, the city council meetings or charter commission meetings or both. Are not being broadcast on YouTube and are on a, a regular. There's something they're being broadcast, they're just not getting up there to begin with. Probably the best way to put it. Does anybody have anything on this? And I've been trying to correct that. Yeah, the last meeting was up on the last meeting was up on YouTube. On YouTube. I believe the matter and issue was the beginnings. Alright, I did look again last night and noticed that the our last meeting was posted up on YouTube on the 11th. There's just timeline. I think what might be an issue is the BOA uh, tape going up on YouTube. Okay. Basically, answer that. Yeah, that's it. We have an email and issue being resolved. This tub spoken about it, and uh, I got an email from the city saying that they're going to be more assertive, if you will, and making sure that it's put up in time yet. At least that's the email received. All right, we'll go on with uh, Secretary's report. So everybody, uh, I know Sandy and Mary Jane, you had a problem getting the minutes on this one. Did you get the ones that I resent? Okay, very good. Thank you. Did you get a chance for you? All right, then uh, I will take. Yeah, what we do that. Yeah, go ahead. What was the problem? I don't know what happened to it. It hasn't been a bunch of Senate reports. 
Anybody else with that issue? You have any other direct? All right. All right, let's, let's go ahead and verify emails. And Greg, why don't you go ahead and give, me, give us the email? That, or she'll repeat it. Let's do that. I don't 
you're referring to the Charter Commission. And that's the Charter? I'm talking about Charter, no, no, not, not Charter Commission members. I'm talking about elected officials. That's what we're discussing was qualifications for elected officials and elections. Uh, what I'm speaking of is, let's say, for instance, uh, somebody resigns their seat for whatever reason. Greg Ben is in the uh, session future section. Yeah, so. Section 3.6 addresses that article 3. And how can we address it? Please? Well, we haven't got to that yet. Okay. Man. All right. Uh, any other old miscellaneous business that needs to be discussed before we get started on the articles? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll, we'll start again with the preamble. I, I spoke today. Uh, with Ted at some length about the preamble, and I've done a lot of research since uh, the last meeting, uh, just revisiting words and their exact definitions. Um, what Ted and Lisa did come up with, um, I asked Ted directly his thoughts on it. Uh, he he feel, uh, I mean, I'm just going to say a little bit, that, and hopefully I'm getting his words right, but he is okay with the uh, uh, preamble that is written, and I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Um, there's, a, there's a word I'm going to add, though, because it stays consistent with uh, uh, a future article and section, but it says, We the people of the city of Raytown, Acknowledge each person to be endowed with self sovereignty and therefore the natural right to life, liberty, and property. Uh, this is a small change. We'll take out the and, we'll put and after property and add privacy to stay consistent with um, which uh, article would be, our section would be 1.3 in the future. But uh, in order to secure our protections on an improved government, enjoying the benefits and advantage of constitutional home rule. Currently under this Constitution of the State of Missouri, we adopt the following charter. And uh, uh, after having read that and really researched it, talking with Ted and Lisa, um, I'm under the opinion now that that really covers the basis that we need to cover it. Uh, if there's anything um, legally that might be uh, differentiated from that, I'm sure that uh, when this goes before an attorney, they will. Um, give us some direction. Uh, so I'm actually asking for us to um, acknowledge this. Uh, I'm going to give Lisa a little chance to talk to it. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll go from there. Um, I'm going right, in one point, this theoretically, we talked about this. I, I had to talk in front of everyone about it. But I thought it would be best to switch article to and three, or sorry, one and two rather, flip those, um, because we start out talking about um, the people, and then we move into the government, and we move back to the people and back to the government, so I thought it would flow better if we went um, restrictions and powers for Article One, and then appropriation and boundaries for Article Two, and then moving on to the rest of the regional uh, matters. Um, as far as the life, liberty, and uh, property part, um, privacy technically is not a right, it's just um, but I put it in there in what would be theoretically Article 2.3 because it's theoretically to be protected by our city, um, but it's not technically in of itself a right. So I don't know how you feel about that. We'll take that under comment from the other commissioners. So are we going by the ones that Ted provided on the handout that we received today? The handout that Ted uh, sent everybody today was supposedly his original documents and came before his conversations and trying to work out the preamble and articles one and two with the Lisa. And the point I want to make here, too, is um, this preamble obviously will be reviewed by an attorney. And if there is a legal issue with the way it comes across, then I'm sure it will give us some direction. Okay. 
So, uh, instead of spending the next hour discussing this, I think we should just uh, uh, move on and uh, allow, allow us to get to a body of the charter and then start really looking at it. Greg, go ahead. I've got to be honest with you, I really like the flowery language better. <laughs> However, if the sponsor of the flowery language is pulling away from it, there's no point in arguing the point. So I think we just move forward. The author, I should say. The author. <laughs> okay, hold on. Jim? Yeah, I just have a question. Do we have, do we have a copy of the, of the actual reading that you just read to us? Yes, you did. Uh, Lisa sent that out. Lisa 
translate on this. And she did provide me with a definition, and I also looked at the words myself, and it's, um, you know, it's self, obviously, is very, I mean, you can't argue with self, but uh, sovereignty basically is a noun that means a quality or state of being, being sovereign, a status, dominion, power, or authority, or a, uh, of being sovereign. It's a supreme or independent power, and, and it's a uh, supreme power, especially over a uh, body uh, politic, and that body politic is, is part of the, uh, uh, the actual uh, future article. So, uh, it, it, what it does, it government is formed by the people wanting to basically get in contract with each other. Okay, and, and, and by getting in contract with each other for the ability to, uh, uh, yeah, protect our, our rights and everything from, you know, as a group. Uh, that's one reason why uh, we, we actually formed the United States, is to get our self-rule from our, our Britain. So, I mean, it, it, self sovereignty is the act or basically allows the people to govern themselves. Can I mess up this? Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Janet. Thank you. Um, also, when you consider that there, unlike the United Nations, would like to control the world um, under one, what I would say, it's important that we have this because we want to, to be independent from, you know, something like that happening. Yes, Jim. Well, when when it reads in the same sentence and implies that we are self-sovereign in terms of property, um, if that were true, then the utilities couldn't come along and stick a box in your yard you don't want. At least we can believe that uh, that we have total control of our own property, and that's reading in the sentence with the words property. So I think that's a little bit misleading, and the key to it is that I will go back to what your attorney says. The question is, what are the limitations of power of property? Uh, to say that we are totally self-sovereign and we run our own property is not true. Um, we don't even, as a city, have a right to do that because. The state's taking away our rights, oftentimes, to um, uh, franchise taxes uh, or to even control our own property. So um, I'm just talking about that term uh, connected with life of the property. We have, uh, we have limitations. We are not literally sovereign. So um, maybe that's something that we can, we'll get an interpretation from the attorney, but um, I think it's a little bit confusing, and the question is, if somebody sued uh, under that this one sentence, uh, I don't think it would win in the Missouri Supreme Court. Uh, and that would be the question that I get the attorney would answer. Hold on one second. To address the issue of sovereign rights. Sovereign rights are nothing more than God-given rights, and they do have a place within this document, as much as do our legal rights, uh, which are being cemented within this document. Our God-given rights are um, affirmable and worthy of mention. Yeah, I think we're taking a lot of time on this, but uh, Jason did bring up one th one thing I did want to uh, mention. Uh, can you refer back to what you were talking about? Yeah, I uh, I think the discussion we had again. I, I agree with Mr. Asia on the aspect that well, obviously the chair mentioned as well. I'm not aware of the word of this, but uh, last time there was a suggestion brought up. Is pretty much the exact same reading, with the exception of the self sovereignty and therefore. So it just read, We, the people of the city of Raytown, acknowledge each person to be endowed with the natural right of life, liberty, and property. Um, 
some felt that was kind of redundant to, to have the self sovereignty piece in there. So um, that's always a suggestion as well. Um, either way, the uh, commission uh, supports. Um, I'll, I'll be fine with. Uh, let me start with the one that's coming on this. <laughs> This is a contract between the citizens and the government they form. And so what we do is we go into the restrictions on the people and the government later on that defines what we set up here. So as far as locking a box on a piece of property, if we define it, you know, and as we go into say here, it's anything that is not mentioned, the city shall otherwise have all powers. Um, it's not something that would ever come up with way I can imagine. But um, it, I do believe it, it has a purpose of being in here, and it is technically different from the end of that sentence, so that's all. I've got a question for you. Is there a way that we can highlight the words that uh, were removed from the statement that Jason talked about to where uh, we can either readdress it or actually ask a direct question to the attorney about it, and then we can move on? Very good. Uh, what, can I see a show of hands as then who would accept this preamble document with that in mind? With, uh, with it being stated the way it's stated, and then with uh, the parts being highlighted that Jason mentioned as possibly being removed and addressed by the attorney later. Correct. But I would like to highlight it because those are specific words that we're talking about. Uh, looking or address. Yeah, no, no, I want to see a show of hands. Okay. I, I, yeah, let's see a show of hands of support. I, uh, would you, before we do that, would you clarify, please? You're, you're asking whether we would be amenable to removing that verbiage later? No, I'm just saying that it, it, what we're trying to do is get past this preamble by highlighting this as something that we might come back and address or ask the attorney to address specifically when he goes to review the document as to whether or not this should be included or not should be included and give his opinion. Thank you. Can I see you show of hands, please, so we can get past this now? Anybody? Somebody wants it? No, I agree. I'd like to highlight it and maybe address it or at least have an attorney look at it. Okay. All right, we need to make a vote on this so that we can get it done. I'll make so, that motion. A second. All right. And before you call, will you clarify exactly what we're voting on, please? Go ahead and read it. Say something to you. Okay, again, um, just to reiterate Steve's point. Um, going to highlight a section and have the attorney revisit it. So it's going to be this. It's going to say, we the people of the city of Brady County acknowledge each person to be endowed with, this part will be highlighted, self-sovereignty and therefore, um, so then I'll say the natural right to life, liberty, and property in order to secure our protections under an approved government and join the benefits and advantages of constitutional home rule under the Constitution of the state of Missouri. We adopt the following charter. Jim, okay, Jim. Okay. All right, take a roll call, please. Jim Eden? Yes. Susan Dolan? No. Janet Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? No. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? No. Michael McDonald? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? No. Mary Jane Mabusker? No. Greg Walters? Yes. Yes. Can we have the results, please? Okay, that's seven, five, four, and five against. I'll post your passes. All right. Let's go into. Um, uh, Article 1 and uh, 
I'd like to have a discussion real quick on uh, everybody's opinion of moving uh, Article One, art, moving Article One and Article Two. Uh, Article One being now powers versus uh, incorporation of boundaries, and it, it seems it does seem to fit in since it is talking about people and city rights versus just government rights uh, to to be the, the, the next thing in the sequence. So that's my personal opinion, and we'll take any other comments. Please. So this this same the same section was two point one for our date last. Yeah, that's correct. It's two point one for four. It's two point one now. Now it's one point one. Okay. Thank you. I just want to clarify that. And we had previously read through this, and my notes show us actually having affirmed it uh, previously. So uh, I guess I would take a motion. To so move. Second. Please take roll call. Jim Major? Yes. Ted Susan Dolan? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Hartwell? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Warren? Yes. Mary Jane Van Buster? Yes. Craig Walters? Yes. The next one would be section 1.2, which was previous section 2.2, affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of government, the city shall not, and then there's three items on there. We'll start with the actual 1.2. Before we get to A, B, and C. Any comments, please? We're on 1.2. Which one? Yeah. Well, we should be 2.2. 2.2 A. Yeah. Well, actually, this is just 2.2, the first part of it. And then we'll get to A. We'll address each one of those separately.
start with these comments, please. Go ahead, Greg. We are on what was formerly 2.2. Right. It is now 1.2. That's correct. Okay, under sub paragraph A, if I can call it that, it says bridge or bridge on. No, we're not going there yet. Okay. Let's just get to the first part. That one sentence. Well, I mean, I guess we can start with 1.2A. First sentence, I'm okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, I guess it was 2.2. So the first sentence says, affirming that the protection of the people is the principal office of the government, the city of Great, the city shall not. And then there's three sections apparently. And I guess we're going to vote on each section individually, is my understanding. That would be my hope. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Greg. I was going to say was on section eight says a bridge or infringe upon any persons, inhabitants, or visitors' freedom of speech, whether popular or unpopular, or of the press, freedom to peaceably assemble, to peaceably live as desired, to keep and bear arms, or to petition the government for redress of grievances. I had no problem with all those. They're all in our constitution, so they all fit. Um, but it, it, the one part that seems redundant is says it says a bridge or infringe upon any persons, inhabitants, or visitors' freedom of speech. Whether popular or unpopular is somewhat redundant. Freedom of speech is freedom of speech. And whether it's popular or unpopular is among the ears of whoever's listening at the moment. So I would just feel it's redundant when you can remove those three words, four words. Okay, any other comment? Has anybody else written anything to 1.2 A? I am, but basically. Can I just read um, Mr. Bowman's version? Okay. Okay, so I guess his is under is under is under instruction, is that what it is? That's his that's a rough before we make what we want to Okay, so I guess the question I have is okay, so this new one point two everything that's written in here, this is what was the result of you and Mr. Bowman's collaboration. Okay, so I guess the question I have is, I don't. This hasn't changed since the last meeting, right here. So he was. So I mean, I, I can assume that he was fine with, with everything written. Okay. My conversations with Ted today he said that based on the work that they did together, that uh, he was accepting of this. Uh, however, there were a few other, a few additional words, and he would like to cut out, but just in the process of wanting to get it passed, he was okay with it. Well, personally, I, I don't have too much of an issue with, with A. Uh, I do agree with Mr. Walters, though, that some of it seems a little redundant, that, you know, could be marked out, you know. Um, I have some other issues with some other sections here, but um, okay, Greg, could you could you please repeat the three that you were those words that you were wanting to omit from this that you would care to release? Whether the popular or unpopular. Whether popular or unpopular? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, I would make a motion to approve well, or, I know there's a motion on the table, but was that seconded? No, okay, so I can. I just do it after oh, discussion. Okay, you do discussion. That's just for discussion. I have to make Okay, well, I can make a motion. Try to leave it down to for for a vote on that section, but to scratch the words whether popular or unpopular. Okay. And I'm, yeah. Well, and um, okay, there could be more discussion though. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Susan. Well, as long as we're pairing things down in that same subsection A. Uh, a bridge or infringe upon any person's inhabitants or visitors freedom of speech of the press and to peaceably assemble. 
far as what I just read, the striking words, whether popular or unpopular, okay. the comma after that, and the two words, or of. Uh, <clears throat> right, and we also uh, struck out one freedom. Oh, oh you're right. right, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. A bridge or infringe upon any person's, inhabitants, or visitors' freedom of speech or the press to peaceably assemble, to peaceably live as desired, to keep in their arms, or to petition the government for redress of grievances. Yes, um, somebody earlier was talking about taking out inhabitants or visitors and just say person. Where did that go? I that that I was the question. Susan asked that question. Lisa gave an answer to it, and uh, Susan was happy with uh, Lisa's answer. If, uh, if if you want Lisa to repeat that, she can. Yes, um, All of this, I agree with Mr. Mateta because he also stated that at last meeting that, you know, these type of things are already covered. And so I don't see why we have to keep going over that and, and you know, offering that information in this document. Press to peacefully assemble, to keep their arms or 
petition to Governor Ford be addressed in grievances. That was your motion. That was my motion. What was left out was what was what was also stricken was to peacefully live as desired. Is that in there? That that is not in what he just read. Is that is that correct, Jason? Um, yeah, that's in yeah. this read. That also seems to be kind of redundant too. Uh, all right, Greg, is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. All right, Lisa, would you take the please? Joint French upon any persons, inhabitants, or visitors' freedom of speech, the press to peaceably assemble to keep and bear arms or to petition the government for a redress of grievances. It would leave out to peaceably live as desired. Again, I want to reiterate this. You know, I'm the type of individual, if I 
disagree with something, I present my own plan. So, again, I want to see some options. If someone's against this, and obviously, I put a full paper of one against one myself, but, you know, not, not to be personal, I think, but at least I presented a plan of something, an option. So, again, I want to see some options. If somebody wishes to present something to be an option so that we can vote on it, please do. Um, so, I guess what I'm getting at is that maybe if that's not available today, then we can kind of table that section and maybe at the next meeting, which I hate to do this, but at least have some options to vote on so people can make and present some things and we can go from there. I mean, that's, that's, an, that's an option to consider so that we can go on because I don't know exactly what we're going to do. I agree with Jason. I would make a motion to table this and provide the opportunity for any any member of the um, of this committee to to offer alternative for the next meeting. Second. Okay. The motion. It looks like A and B are pretty much the same. Uh, maybe we can maybe mesh those together as we strike something. suggestion then that we just highlight this whole section 1.2 to be readdressed and we more go on to what it is currently listed as 2.3 which will now be 1.3 under powers. Point of order, we have a motion that has been seconded on the table. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead, Jim. Yes. 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 Yes.
discussion.
homes in this city. I think we have Ohio Intelligent Builders, and that's why we're here. However, I think we also have to shy away from writing documents so long, like so many of them have in the past, that they don't get passed. And when we already have documents in place from the federal level on down, spelling out what our rights are, I just don't see any reason to completely, until they rewrite those, or continue to take space to say the same thing. Other discussion? There is a current motion on the floor that's been seconded. Yes, please. There's a motion to adopt 1.3. The city shall not relinquish its powers or its affirmative protection of life, liberty, property, or privacy of the people to any of the authority of our country. Jim Major? No. Susan Dolan? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? I think it's redundant. No. Senator Hartwell? No. Black McDonald? No. Charlotte Nelson? No. Mark Moore? Yes. Mary Jane Emerson? No. Greg Walters? Yes. That's the six. Is there an alternative motion? What was that? It was six to six. Motion does not carry. state constitution says that's legal. So it can't happen, theoretically, unless 
start a possible rewrite. And I wrote, uh, the city shall not relinquish its power towards the firm protection of life, liberty, property, or privacy of the people to any other authority without express permission of the people through a public vote. simply go in and just say we're going to ignore this law and do what they do as we please. As is written in the charter. The point of order, where, where are we, Mr. Chairman? Are we still on number three? Have we voted yeah. down? Are we on Jason's motion? Well, we're, we're looking at Jason's, well, Jason did the motion. He has, has asked for a rewrite and we're currently exploring a possible rewrite of that one. For a possible motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I, mean, I, I really think that this is somewhat akin to Section 1.2. I mean, it will not be resolved here tonight by the board of 12 people. Um, and it would be best to carry it over and perhaps it can be incorporated into 1.2. I heard some good ideas and some good thoughts coming from others here tonight on that. And I think that it would. To give it, a, it's important obviously to a lot of people here. I think there are some people confused by the importance of votes. It makes it a false image of it not being a popular decision when actually I think the majority of the commission would like to see something of this nature in there. But it, I think that it needs to be worked over more. And I don't see the harm just carrying it over. They did get some other stuff out of it. We can move on. All right, so it's going to make a motion to that effect. You wish. Do I have to say it or do you just say so? It's a lot easier. So you see, yeah, our motion postponed. I second. All right, we have a motion. Any more discussion? Seeing that. Yes. 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 Yes.
This uh, is very uh, concurrent with MML and other city charters, and we had previously uh, addressed this uh, and had originally shown a, um, uh, a vote or a hand, uh, vote hand approval, whatever you call it, uh, to accept it. So we take a motion. So section 2.1, if I misread it, because the, the copy is going to make sure the copy has correct before I vote on it, but 2.1, incorporation of boundaries, says that the city within the corporate limits, it says as now established or hereafter established and on file in the office of the city clerk, as provided by law, shall continue to be a municipal body, politic, and public corporation in perpetuity under, <coughs> excuse me, under the name of the city of Raytown. Is that correct? Discussion? Right, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason. Jason, second. Any other discussion? Take a vote, please. Jim Major? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Jan Anderson? Yes. Lisa Anderson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Markle? Yes. Michael McDonough? Yes. Charlotte Monson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. 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 Now, originally we did have a section 1.2 that would be a 2.2 that we eliminated that now. Okay. All right. So we're actually in section 3, Board of Alderman. The original where power is invested is uh, pretty much a boilerplate as we discussed the last time and we did have a vote of hand that uh, by my understanding did approve that. Uh, 
So if there's any discussion, uh, I'll have Lisa read it. And uh, go from there. 3.1 Clear Power is vested. Except as this charter otherwise provides, all powers of the city shall be vested in the Board of Aldermen. The Board shall provide for the exercise of these powers and for the performance of all duties and obligations imposed on the city by law. Any discussion? If none, I'll take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Janisha? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Janet Emerson? Yes. Ace Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Gunther? Yes. Sandra Harwell? Yes. Michael McDonald? Yes. Charlie Wilson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Rachel Gunther? Yes. 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 Let's go to section 3.2, Alderman. Section 3.2 is labeled composition eligibility of election terms. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Is it the same? Are um, the one I sent another email, by the way, just I sent another email out today when I wrote it, it, it made a few small grammatical changes. Um, and then there's something I want to mention later on. Um, but uh, yeah, this is taking all the uh, all the uh, wordage, I guess, uh, from uh, thoughts and comments from everybody else. But, 3.2, composition, eligibility, election, and terms. 3.2a, composition. There shall be a board of aldermen consisting of 10 members elected by registered voters of their respective wards as provided in the nominations elections article of this charter. Okay, um, and when I put that nominations election, this, this is taken from an ML document. Um, later on, we'll obviously have the nominations and elections section. Um, that's beyond the parties. So we can hammer out the, de the more of the details uh, in regards to uh, to that as well, how the elections will operate, and what kind of system we'll have, and things like that. That's what it's referring to. Um, I think, Mr. Gunther, I think you got to change maybe your. Well, there's a possibility once we name that article nominations and elections you would capitalize article and have a number uh article something as this chart you know but so yeah. we can leave a blank space on the line and close in later or something yes i just didn't hear all of jason's comments comment um but did he spoke did he, were you addressing the 10 members uh, yeah, in the composition, this says there should be a board, board of aldermen consisting of 10 members elected by registered voters of respective wards. And then the thing I was talking about was the nom as, is, as in the nominations and elections article of this charter. So the process for how they oh, takes place hasn't been discussed yet. So I see the point that there's some questions there. Yeah, okay. Any other discussion? Thank you much. So moved. Same. Any other discussion? It's uh, 2.2 or 3.2a. Jim Major? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Jen Yes. 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 Let's move on to section 3.2 B eligibility, please. Jason, you want to read your? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm reading the version that I that I wrote and sent out. So I mean, if you guys want to discuss, change that. It's fine. Again, I was charged with the responsibility of writing this article, so that's or at least one of the three you're supposed to write it, so that's what I did. So anyway, um, before I get started reading this, uh, we had a big discussion about that last sentence at the last meeting uh, about unpaid city taxes, what that exactly meant. Uh, I think the conversation kind of spin back to the word city, we're all state, federal and stuff, but I think that's something that 
we all really practically agree on. I think that last sentence there, um, and I'll bring it up again here in a minute, it should be highlighted for the lawyer. <laughs> Make a note to the side. In my email I sent out today with this, I also suggested such. Maybe pull that out so the lawyer can look at it. So I don't even get the intent of what we're wanting with the tax issue, but uh, I just want to throw that out before I get started. But uh, Section 3.2 Eligibility. To be eligible for the office of alderman, a person must be a citizen of the United States, a registered voter of the city, and respective ward shall have, have been a resident of the city for at least two years prior to his or her election. An alderman shall reside and shall reside. Uh, I think I maybe miswrote there. So shall reside uh, in and oh, I'm sorry, that's correct. And establish primary residency within the respective board for at least one year prior to their election and during the entirety of their term from which they were elected to. In addition, nor shall any person be elected or appointed to the office of alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes during the entirety of their term. Uh, again, I think we all agreed on the last sentence. We were just kind of curious. I think the lawyer should should look at that to make sure we get the intent of what we want because I think all of us really want that. So, at any rate. Any discussion? Lisa? Um, I, all I did was, I think, uh, the last sentence that I changed, I took out an addition, I put no person shall serve as alderman who, so-and-so, uh, just cut out some words. Yeah, 
if you can't, I mean, you can't be appointed. I mean, let's put it this way. No person shall be uh, elected or appointed to the office of alderman who is in arrears for any unpaid city taxes during the entirety of their term. Um, thank you, Ms. Van Boster. I totally slipped my mind there.
served four year terms of office. The of office, um, is that what you wanted it? Well, since Jason's the author of this, we'll let him decide. Each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles. Aldermen shall be elected to serve staggered four-year terms. The term and order of elected alderman positions shall keep with continuity from the previous structure and status prior to this charter. Aldermen shall be elected to serve four-year terms and then Susan's suggestion of office. Each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles. The term and order of elected alderman positions shall keep with continuity I'm going to wait here in here. I, I, I like the second version because when I read Alderman shall be elected to serve staggered four year terms, uh, there's no reference back to the Alderman of each ward. So, which Aldermen are serving staggered four year terms? All 10 of them are. <laughs> so, I'm just I, I'm thinking the uh, Lisa's version is a little bit clearer than that. Just my thoughts. Motion to approve. Second. 3.2C, election and terms. Aldermen shall be elected to serve four-year terms of office. Each ward shall have two aldermen on staggered election cycles. The term and order of elected alderman position shall keep it in continuity with the previous structure. Keep with the company from the previous structure. Um, and status prior to this charter. Jim, was that your motion? If Jason made the motion, I say that. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Any vote? Roll call. Jim Major? Yes. Susan Dolan? Yes. Ken Emerson? Yes. Lisa Emerson? Yes. Jason Green? Yes. Steve Dunkley? Yes. Yes, Michael McDonough? Yes. Charlotte Nelson? Yes. Mark Moore? Yes. Yes. Greg Walters? Yes. All right, section 3.3, compensation and expenses. So the Board of Aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this board and the mayor by ordinance, and they shall receive their actual and necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties of office. Uh, this is a continuity with the current uh, structure, current system we have now. Uh, also, uh, this wording was uh, was actually borrowed from the MML document. Okay. Um, Jason, Lisa doesn't have that, but I'm also going to add too that uh, uh, in, a, in a lot of other uh, charters, I'm also read that uh, um, something to the order that no ordinance changing such compensation shall become effective for a board of aldermen member until the commencement of a new term of office. Uh, just to clarify that they can't vote in their own right. races. Yeah, sure. Um, the board of aldermen may determine their annual compensation of this board and the mayor by ordinance they shall receive their actual necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties. I'd also make a uh, motion to strike out and the mayor because we've talked about him in his own room. Because we're talking about the word wall again. Go ahead. Um, if the section is titled the Board of Aldermen and the mayor is a member of the And I understand what you're saying, that, what you're getting at, Mr. Dunn, but I really do. Um, but since we're doing compensations for the Board of Aldermen, I figured, it, it, I, in my opinion, it would be appropriate for Section 3.3. I, I can agree with that. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Would this be possible or appropriate 
You reminded me of Missouri. Yeah. You cannot vote yourself to increase. Yeah. And, and, and you know, you reminded me of the conversation with what I was thinking about. Uh, Board of Aldermen may determine they are annual compensation. And the balance of the sentence. Starting the words of this board is just repetitive. To say the Board of Aldermen may determine. The Board of Aldermen may determine they are annual compensation, and the, I won't enter into the mayor or whatever else you're looking at here. Striking the words of this board.
such compensation shall become effective for a board member. I was quite effective that way. Covered both the board and the mayor until the commencement of the term of office. As I said. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read what Jason started, and I put some reference into changing compensation. So the board of aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this board and the mayor by ordinance. But no ordinance changing such compensation shall be come effective for a board of aldermen member until the commencement of a new term of office. Uh, the board of aldermen shall receive their actual and reimbursable necessary expenses incurred in the performance of the duties of the office. Yes. Okay, the way I read that is hypothetically if the board of aldermen owned themselves some kind of pay raise, it says new term of office. So does that mean the board member has to wait four years? Okay. So so some of them will wait two years, some will wait four, depending on where you're at. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I would, I would venture to try to say maybe um, something said a new term like until a new board of aldermen was formed, meaning that the new board, every two years, there's a new board of aldermen. Okay. Is that right? No, because you can still vote on your own thing. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, you're saying. So the idea is that you have an election. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I just want to make sure I clarify that. Life's unfair, so people have to wait. The, the, the odd year, right? Well, I, and I just want to clarify that. And I, I do agree with the concept that you should have a chance to, you know, go for public after putting yourself in the race. All right. Okay. And uh, let me answer Jim's question real quick. I was just going to offer just a shorter verbiage that would say what Jason wants to say. Agree with everybody. I'm going to wait until you come back. Yeah, somebody needs to take a break. Why don't take a break? But try to be back in five minutes because we so we want to at least get this section to play. <laughs> Well, my question would be, uh, why can't 
can you just say that? Why can't we? I mean, even if it's a new board, and I agree with what Jim is saying, it's a, it is a new board when you have new members on there. However, uh, what we're trying to clarify is that board, particular board member that's already serving, can't elect, can't receive the additional compensation until he gets reelected. Was that what he was saying exactly? No, that's not what he said. I understand. That's what, that's well, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, you're saying, and I agree with that. I just it's the motion. I believe you accepted what you spoke of. In so, for instance, in my case, I know it's wrong, so I'm going to say no. Now, Mr. Strader probably has a different recollection. Probably vote yes. So one of us is wrong, one of us is right. That's why I suggest we highlight it. Not that our opinion counts more than anybody else's, but I'm. But it's not the right to stipulate it either way. And let, I mean, well, I understand what you're saying, but I can't vote to okay. stipulate something I think is wrong. Right. I'm, but the other way, we can stipulate it the way I originally worded it, and and, and go from there. Jim just saying that you know, we don't have to. And then you reread the motions. Alright, one, one second, let Jason. I'm fine with highlighting the last point just to make sure it's um, congruent with current state laws. <coughs> um, to look that over. I mean, that's, that's a reasonable request. Well, we have a we have a motion and a second on the floor. I'd like to read, have read Jim's uh, motion, and then we can vote on it. And then if it does not pass, we can go to the other. Right. What the difference is. All right. Um, so that we're aware of the differences between what was suggested. Uh, the one that was suggested previously was the board of aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this board and the mayor by ordinance, but no ordinance changing such compensation shall become effective until the commencement of a new term in office. They shall receive their actual and reimbursable necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties of office. Uh, Mr. Asia's suggestion is the board of aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this board and the mayor by ordinance, which shall take effect at the beginning of the term of the next elected board. They shall receive their actual and reimbursable necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties of office. Is that correct, Jim? Yeah, yeah that was what I said. Right. right. And I do have a question regarding the first sure. one. But when the first one reads this, um, that you would probably have every time there's a pay raise, some people making more money than others. Because if one person was elected right after they passed it, I mean, then a, a new person came in uh, two years later, he would get the higher raise than the other person that voted for it wouldn't get it. His term expired. Very unfair. And we've never done that. That's what that's what, that's what that says. Right. I, I agree. So you would, and I think the board, I think the board shall be making the same salary. Okay. All right. Any other discussion then? On, uh, because that motion was uh, made and seconded by Jason. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Other discussion, Susan. Uh, yeah, I do believe this is. Uh, I didn't mention a lot, but isn't the clarification that this matter covered under the statute? It could be. I do believe it is. And that's why, you know, in the end, the attorney can't look at it. So you, we can, yeah, I mean, we can vote for Jim's motion and and just highlight it and let the attorney deal with it. So if, if that motion passes, then Yes, sir. Another solution would be just go to one election covers all at one time every four years. Then you would be okay. Yeah, that would take a bit. Well, no, you could have other cities. Yeah, but we're, we've already passed that section. <laughs> all right. Uh, so there is a motion and a second on the floor. Um, any other discussion? We'll take a little while. The Board of Aldermen may determine the annual compensation of this board and the mayor by ordinance, which shall take effect at the beginning of the term of the next elected board. They shall receive their actual and reimbursable necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties of office. 